What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through my 1988 Scamp travel trailer for about the second time now. I've got another video walking through the Scamp, but in this video, I'm gonna get more into the financials of pretty much what it takes to set up a full-time off-grid living space in a travel trailer or kind of anything in similar size. This is a 16-foot 1988 Scamp travel trailer and I'm pulling it with a Lincoln Town car and that is very interesting. But let's uh, head on in and I'll show you around. All right, so this is what the Scamp is looking like on the inside right now. It's a pretty basic living space. Got our kitchen over there. That's our fridge. Got the cooler is the fridge here. Holds ice for like two weeks. Got the bed on this side. Here's the whole 360 of this thing. Now, since my initial investment, this whole area over here has changed. This was initially a shower and bathroom kind of area, so we ended up turning it into a wood stove area, and we now have installed the wood stove so we can travel four seasons throughout the country and kind of be comfortable wherever we go. So to start giving you a basic idea of how our entire budget played out, uh, we already had the car. We knew we needed something light enough to pull with the car. Uh, it is a V8. Uh, 4.6 liter engine so it does pull pretty good but the scamp being fiberglass was the perfect option for us uh, we spent four thousand on the scamp and it was honestly the only option we had at the time there was no other trailers like it or anything that would work for us really and we ended up buying it the day it was listed there was about three other people trying to buy it as well but we picked up our baby the day it was listed so we spent four grand on the camper itself and over here we have the solar panel that we bought and this thing was cheap it was like 200 bucks just a basic uh just a basic plug and play solar panel it's got the charge controller built in and everything so it's it's pretty low quality but it was something to get us started where we were on a pretty tight budget for the overall build so the solar panel comes back inside here Let's see if i can brighten this up for you there we go and made this little door here goes into the battery down there and it's a 215 amp hour AGM battery that I have so I put a good amount into the battery well actually that was Andrea's big part <laughs> she, she bit the bullet on the I think it was about $800 this battery somewhere around there but well worth the investment I mean this is the heart of the camper so we wanted to put some decent money into the battery where we knew we could always upgrade solar down the line and right next to it is another great example of a very basic uh, piece of equipment to use. This is very inefficient, this little guy, a uh, 400 watt power inverter that uses way too much power. And honestly, down the line, we, we just plan on investing in a pure sign wave inverter. Uh, they're way more efficient for long term living. But once again, we just kind of went with our budget and what we could get at the time. So if you're looking for that basic initial setup just to get started on the road, this system is pretty perfect to just at least get started. Another thing to figure out while you're building an off-grid living system is your water storage. So this guy on the outside is actually our drinking water container. I think it holds about six gallons. And uh, inside here, we've got our sink water. And this is just basically our fresh water storage in there. I think it's five gallons. And this is the gray water tank. All the deposits from the sink go down into the gray water tank and we can just kind of have that all contained in one system without having to hook up at a campground. Now the sink itself is actually going through a pretty rough time in its life. Uh, we forgot to clear out the lines one night through the winter and uh, it busted. So that was uh, not our best choice, but it was a pretty basic system. Just a little tiny drinking water spigot that we threw on there as the sink. And uh, we keep our doors closed with these bungee cords here while we're driving. That. I'm trying to do this with one hand for you. There we go. And underneath here, so I'm going to have to brighten this up even more. There we go. All right, so that's my 2.2 uh, gallon per hour water pump there. And I did PEX, pipe, pi PEX piping, say that five times fast, through the wall. I basically just drilled that little hole and put the piping through the wall over to the tanks. And the return piping there goes into the gray tank. And that pump right there, I think, was about 60 bucks, somewhere around there. But other than the water pump, the only other things that we have on the electrical system are these LED lights up top. 
one on each side of the fan and that fan in the middle. Uh, and I believe the fan was under $200. I can't remember the exact amount. Uh, I'll put that down in the description. I'll give a whole total overall of the cost of all of our off-grid living items and give you a sum at the end. Now within that sum, I'm not gonna include the cost of all of this customization inside the Scamp because I went as far as taking all the skin off the old walls of the Scamp and grinding out the backing foam, completely redoing the insulation with uh, two layers of Reflectix and a half inch air gap before this two millimeter plywood. So I put in a lot of customization and little unique woodworking things into this like redoing my kitchen counter with resin art and just random little things that I wouldn't count into necessities for off-grid living. Just more of our personal build, so I'm gonna exclude that from the total sum of the amount in the description. I always forget about our little voltmeter back here. So this basically tells us what our voltage of the battery is. Right now it's charging at 14.1 volts, which is pretty good for a cheap little panel. Uh, so when we have sun, we just, we have to keep that thing out all the time. Uh, that's one of the upgrades we plan on making is getting a little bit more solar put just on steady on the roof to keep that number charging most of the time. Uh, but down here it's also got the two USB ports where we plug in our phones and iPad and other USB charging things. Uh, this is like a 12 volt port up there and a little rocker switch which I haven't hooked anything up to yet. So that was a pretty basic rundown of any uh, off-grid living space at its most core basic level. Uh, everything we had was created on a budget, so we didn't get the most expensive of gear, but we got decent enough gear that would get us by for this first year on the road, and we knew we would just kind of build on our finances along the way and upgrade as we went. We knew we just wanted to get on the road immediately. We were over living in a city, an overcrowded city, so we wanted to just get on the road, and we went with what we had, we made it work, and this is pretty much a good example of that basic system you need to do it. Uh, so if you have all the money in the world, more power to you, invest in a little bit better materials than I have, but for those of you who are just trying to get started with the lifestyle or are kind of working on a budget, this system is right up your alley. And that's kind of really been an enjoyable part of the lifestyle as well, It's just waking up every morning in the house that you built yourself and uh, kind of just building on your, your own personal life every single day, kind of trying to improve things, make things more efficient and just working towards that every day is kind of a fulfilling thing as you're traveling around through beautiful nature, living with no rent, and uh, just kind of enjoying the more simple things of life. So for those of you who are looking to start this kind of a lifestyle, I hope this video gives you a little bit of a better view on what you need. I would definitely do a decent investment in the battery at least so you don't have to change that out down the line because a battery is a big investment that you definitely need. So put the money where it needs to go. Uh, don't cheap out too much. Try to get the best quality that you can get with your budget and have that little bit of backup cash as well as you get on the road because you never know what might happen. A uh, car might break down, you know, you might need to fix something, so always have that little bit of backup cash in your initial plan and hopefully a little bit of a financial plan for income as well. So I have another video on that if you'd like to check that out on the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to click like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all of you who are subscribing to the channel, it means a lot to me. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching.